Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I want to do a video that's kind of been brewing around in here for a while. Now, over the last year or so, I, I had an idea to make a video, and I, just the time was never right. And, well, I guess today the time is right. I want to just discuss and then show uh, what I call blurring the lines with Seiko JDM models. You know, if you go back a decade ago, uh, Japan had all the good models, you know, Seiko in the States never really imported any of them, and, you know, it led a lot of us going overseas uh, to get the models we wanted. Um, now, fast forward, and more and more styles are coming out stateside that resemble a lot of the overseas stuff, and I like it. Uh, it's awesome. It's great for people in this country. They do differ in the movements, which I know a lot of you, as you're so educated, will pick up on and, you know, kind of say, well, why do they do that? But whatever the reason is, I, I can't answer it. Uh, but, you know, they're getting into the styles that sell very well uh, in other parts of the world. So to celebrate that, for my wristy, um, on, one, on one arm here, I have the uh, Presage Power Reserve Cocktail Time, uh, SSA 343, which we sell. And oh, when we don't sell my Maxi Marine chronometer. So I'm going to show you two watches today. Uh, they are new to my store. I'm not sure how long they've been out. They certainly have not been out for more than a year. Uh, but like I said, they echo this beautiful, you know, uh, overseas model vibe. And I just think that they're definitely worth taking a look at. So let's check them out. So not that long ago, there was an article uh, in Hodinkee. Bloomberg carried it. Uh, it was talking about Seiko and how they are currently trying to really upmarket themselves in the U.S., a bigger push on Grand Seiko, and uh, a, more of a push on the, the higher-end models. You know, I won't say gone are the days of those inexpensive, you know, solar dress watches that are, you know, have the red ticket on them at Macy's, um, but, you know, it seems like they're definitely going that direction. And these two entries that I have here that are in the store are definitely you know, they, they represent that move. So I have two autos, uh, a, a kind of cocktail time, and then it's beautiful, both of them are from the Presage collection, and this beautiful, you know, textured dial, you know, looks like, you know, some of the enamel dial JDM models that you've seen me carry and that you've seen online. So I'm just going to go over both of them briefly. And like I said, you know, it's kind of like the analog to this watch. Just like this one, same same model, just a little bit different. And what what I really liked about this one is, it's not two tone, but it's got that champagne dial and the gold hands and markers, uh, totally awesome. So this is model number SSA three eight seven. It runs on Seiko's four R fifty seven movement. So yes, it's a four R level movement, but the fifty seven, excuse me, uh, brings the date down to the six o'clock and adds a power reserve module, which we'll get in on in a second over here. It does have a hard lex crystal. Uh, it is a 20 millimeter strap. I almost forgot to give you the size. Uh, so it's 40 and a half millimeters in diameter, around 14 and a half thick to that you know, kind of domed hard lex. A hard lex is kind of like mineral, a little bit harder than mineral, softer than sapphire. And it's 48 millimeters on the tip to tip. Now retail price is 575. Let's um, but let's check it out. So it is an automatic, so it hand winds. So when I turn the crown, it's got power reserve needle right here. Oops, that's not it. I'm sorry, it's up here. I'm looking at the second hand. Uh, looking through the viewfinder is tough. It's the one pointing right here before uh, E for empty. So as I move it, let's get a let's get it away from the Seiko uh, Seiko mark there. There we go. So I got 10. So at 10 hours, it goes all the way up to about 40 hours of power reserve down here. And as you wear it, it will wind, and that needle will continue to go up. You can't overwind it. Um, and not really a clutch built into it, but the mainspring will eventually just spin inside its barrel. See-through case backs. You can check out the, the nice movement. These are made in Japan, water-resistant to 50 meters. Pretty cool looking. Signed crown. Beautiful brown strap. Nice signed Seiko deployant buckle. And like I said, I want to just, let's pull on the dial a bit, and you can see it's got that, um, like the model I'm wearing, the, the, the dial has 
there it is. I think you got it now. The dial has patterning to it and kind of like concentric circles, uh, almost like a mock uh, guilloche, like a rose engine kind of dial. The date, I will admit, you know, I, obviously I have the same watch in white. The date is tough to read. Um, with my 42-year-old eyes, it's getting more and more difficult. Uh, but it does add something a little, it does add a little interest to the dial. I think that it is kind of necessary. I would not want to see this part empty. Check out the gold hands. Gold applied markers. Really nice looking. And, you know, it pairs well. The gold and everything pairs well with the nice dark brown strap that they provided on. And, of course... The Seiko signed deployment buckle. So like I said, so uh, 575 for this one. And then let's move on to the other presage. Like I said, these both are presages. A presage is a collection within Seiko. I'll just show you the tag real quick. Seiko presage. So this guy comes in at 495. He runs on a 4R35, which is hand winds. Again, hand winds hacks. It's a date only. But we upgrade now to a sapphire crystal. 30 meters of water resistance, 20 millimeter lug. The sizing is similar, 40, almost 42, 41 and a half on the diameter. 12 thick to that slightly domed sapphire crystal, but still the same tip to tip, uh, 48 millimeters on the tip to tip. And just like I did on the other one, the dial here is the absolute standout. Check that out. The markers, by the way, in the hands, everything is black. So it may appear to be silver, I guess, in certain conditions, but it's definitely black. I know the studio can kind of fool you sometimes. But check out how the dial is done. Look at the applied Roman numerals. Totally gorgeous. Again, it just it doesn't look like your normal American Seiko, if you will. Definitely elevating it uh, a couple of notches. There's the 4R35 movement, 23 joules. Uh, let's see, Sapphire, I believe somewhere on here it does say Made in Japan, there it is, Made in Japan. So they pair this one with a black strap and a similar signed Seiko buckle. Really cool. So what I'll do is I'll pop each one on, give you a quick wrist shot, and we'll call it a day. So I'm not really sizing it to my wrist, so it is, it's dangling a bit. But there you can see the size of the head on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist. Whether you wear it above the bone or below, it doesn't really matter. The watch fits fine. As I said, I have, you know, that the white version, white and blue version, and it fits me perfectly. Very comfortable watch, very beautiful watch. It actually is a watch that gets compliments. I think with this kind of champagne -y dial with the gold hands, I mean, it, it's a little more formal than the one I have, uh, but certainly it, it's going to get looks. It really, it really looks the uh, looks the dressy part for sure. And then at one more millimeter in diameter, but the same tip to tip dimension. We have that awesome white dial with the black hands and applied uh, Roman numerals. Totally looks amazing. Very simple, very elegant, and at the same time sophisticated and complex. Uh, really gorgeous looking. I I totally totally love this one. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a couple of new entries in the uh, Seiko, the elevated division, if you will. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.